Hey guys, this is Not Lammers of Invoked 101. Welcome back, and today we are doing the new Samorg deck profile. This is my version. This is actually uh, my buddy Cody from the TG deck profile. He actually took a version of Samorg to our competitive locals uh, last week and got first place with it. So if you guys want to see his version, leave that down in the comments below. Just ask for it, and I'll get that for you guys. But in the meantime, this is my version. It's just about done. I'm only missing one card, so there's only one card that needs to be swapped out from this version, but it's still 40 cards, so I figured I'd show it off to you guys. Anyways, before we get right into the deck profile, if you guys feel like backing the channel and supporting us, down in the, down in the description there's a link to our Patreon. Everything you donate there helps us out a lot and then there's also a link to our teespring if you feel like picking up some merch and then there's also a link to our discord if you like chatting with us so anyways moving the spells and traps off to the side we're going to get right into the main deck monsters the first guy we're playing is triple samorg lord of the storm realistically you should only be playing two of this guy uh, in my final version, I'm only playing two because I don't feel he's worth running three, and there's another card that's worth, that's better than playing this guy at three. But anyway, Smorg Lord of the Storm has the effect of your opponent cannot target this tribute summon card with spells, spell trap cards, or effects. You can only activate each of the following. You can only use each of the following effects of Lord of the Storm once per turn, and it, both of the effects are when a spell or trap card or effect is activated, quick effect tribute one wind wing beast monster target a card your opponent controls, shuffle it in the deck. When a, wing, when a winged beast monster you control is destroyed by battle while this card is in the graveyard, you can add this card to your hand. So that's pretty neat. Picks itself back into the hand, but not super great. Not nearly as cool as Samorg of Darkness or Darkness Samorg. This guy is awesome. This is probably one of my, like, my new favorite card arts for a lot. Like I just think he looks awesome, and he's also a pretty decent card. So his effect is... While this face-up card is on the field, this card is also Wind Attribute. You can only use each of the following effects of Darkness once per turn, and its effect is if you tribute summon a Dark or Wind monster, you can special summon this card from the graveyard if it was there uh, when the monster is tribute summoned, or hand even if not. When a spell or trap card or effect is activated, quick effect, you can tribute one Wind Wing Beast monster, uh, negate the activation, and if you do, destroy that card. So just an overall better version of Lord of the Storm in my opinion, but Lord still gets to do some pretty neat stuff. And then the last big Samorg monster we play is Dark Samorg. And this guy, I had never read Dark Samorg. I'd never come across it. It was a little before when I started playing. And I read its effect and I was like, this guy's pretty cool. So his effect is, while face up on the field, this card is also Wind Attribute. You can banish one Dark Monster and one Wind Monster from your graveyard. Special summon this card from the hand. You can banish one Dark Monster and one Wind Monster from your hand. Special summon this card from the graveyard. Your opponent cannot set any cards on the field, making him super useful to get and set up. So like he he basically the he is fundamentally where some more as an archetype comes from as he prevents uh as samorg as a deck doesn't like back row so he fits very well with them next up we have ryza the mega monarch this is a wind winged beast level eight so it works with trade in which is the main reason that i'm playing it it says uh, you can tribute summon this card by tributing one tribute summoned monster if this card is tribute summoned target a card on the field and one card in either player's graveyard also if this card is tribute summoned by tributing a wind monster you can target an additional card on the field Place the first targets on top of the deck in any order. Also, after that, return the additional target, if any, to the hand. And 2800 body, he's pretty beefy, so uh, works out pretty well. And the last big bird that we play is Double Danger Thunderbird. So Danger Thunderbird is pretty cool. I've actually had these things sitting in my binder for quite some time, so uh, finally nice to actually use them for something. Level 8, so it works with trade-in, which is awesome. Winged Beast, which is even better, and it special summons itself, and I, if I'm correct, it pop, uh, it does the danger thing where you know you pick one and then discard one, but I think its effect is that it gets to pop a card. Discard is discarded, target one set card your opponent controls, destroy it. Yeah, so it gets to destroy one face down, one set card, which is pretty dope. So uh, that's it for the big birds of the deck. Now we're going to move into the little birds, such as Samorg, Bird of Beginning. This is the little guy, and I believe this one gives you the extra normal summon. So all the little Samorgs have the effect of if you control no back row, right? 
And it's like uh, it's like if you control no backer, you can special summon them from the graveyard, but in defense mode, banish them when they leave, when they leave the field. And then they also have a uh, additional effect, which is their main effect. And his effect is when this card is normal summon, you can activate this effect during your main phase. You can, this turn you can normal summon once a Morgan monster in addition to your normal summon slash set. You can only gain this effect once per turn. Uh, oh, and it also locks you into wing, uh, winged beast monsters. So that's pretty interesting. Here's the card I need to play at three. This is a uh, Smorg Bird of Bringing. This one is, uh, if I could swap out one card for it, I'd swap a Lord of the Storm out for one more of this guy. Because this guy is like the best one. Uh, so he's the only card I'm missing. But uh, Bird of Bringing, he has the same Samorg effect of being able to special summon himself if there's no back row. And then, but his main effect is, when this card is normal summoned, you can add one Samorg card from your deck to your hand, except Samorg Bird of Bringing, uh, which is very useful as it gets you the uh, spells and traps that you need to continue your turn. After that, we have uh, Samorg uh, Bird of Calamity at two. Uh, shares the same effect as the other Samorgs, but his bonus effect is that uh, on normal summon you get to send one Samorg card from your deck to the grave. And then the last one is Samorg Bird of Protection. And his bonus, his effect is if this card is normal summon, you can target one card in your opponent's spell trap zone, return it to the hand. So pretty, pretty all right. Um, yeah, I know there's a lot of like big birds and little birds, but I'm playing a lot of stuff that uh, helps with that. So we're gonna set these guys off to the side and we're gonna get right into the spells now. The first one we're playing is Triple Samorg Onslaught. This is a really cool one. This is the rota for the deck. It says, discard one winged beast monster, add two Samorg monsters with different attributes from your deck to your hand, which is why it's important that we play uh, at least three of the dark Samorgs. And so, uh, its other effect is you can banish this card from your graveyard, reveal one winged beast monster in your hand, and if you do, reduce the levels of monsters in your hand with that name by one for the rest of this turn, even if they are summoned. You can only activate one onslaught per turn. And then we have double Samorg Repulsion, which says discard a winged beast monster, return all cards in your opponent's spell and trap zones to the hand. You can, only, you can banish this card from your graveyard, reveal a winged beast monster in your hand, and if you do, reduce the levels of monsters in your hand with that name by one. So if you activate both, you get to reduce the levels of a Samorg by two, which is pretty neat. After that, we have Triple Elbors, the sacred uh, lands of Samorg. So this is their field spell. Uh, so it says all wind, winged beasts on the field gain 300 attack. You can only use each of the following effects of Elbors once per turn. You can reveal one level 5 or higher wind winged beast monster in your hand. This turn, you can normal summon winged beast monsters for one less tribute even if this card leaves the field. If you control a wind winged beast monster, you can immediately after this effect resolves, normal summon one wind winged beast. So you can potentially, potentially get three normal summons in a turn with this deck, which is pretty crazy. And of course, the one terraforming because it's limited. After that, aside from the Samorg stuff, we have Triple Trade-In, like I was mentioning. Trade-In is really important in this deck just because it lets you dig a little deeper into your deck, and they we do play quite a bit of level 8, so I like playing the Trade-In. And then lastly, Triple MST. Samorg already hates back row, and you're already discarding a lot, so I felt Twin Twisters wasn't good for this deck. Uh, hey Trunade is also pretty okay for this deck. I think Hey Trunade would be a another really good one, but I went with the stock standard MST. I figured that would be uh, functional. All right, moving into the traps, the last part of the deck. Uh, we have only six, but two, but realistically it's two. So we have Triple Samorg Sky Battle. This card is pretty cool from what I remember reading of it. It says, uh, Wing Beast monsters you control cannot be targeted by your opponent's card effects or their monster's attacks, except your Wing Beast monsters with the highest attack. So basically, it's like a uh, ring of magnetism makes uh, your biggest winged beast a uh, lightning rod, and then it says uh, you can send you can send this card to the graveyard. You can send to the graveyard this card and two Samorg monsters you control with different original attributes whose original levels are seven or higher. Return as many cards on the field to the hand as possible, and if you do, take 500 damage for each card returned to the hand this way. Then inflict damage to your opponent equal to the damage you took. You can only use each effect of Sky Battle once per turn. So uh, honestly, I would I have considered cutting this one down to two just because it's like I don't think it's like super great, but at the same time. So if you don't feel like playing this, you could also play hand traps. And then the last card, and I think this card is definitely a mandatory three of in this deck, Harpy's Feather Storm. And I got my uh, my Duel of Saga ones. Shout out uh, to Alex for hooking me up with the third one. Uh, but 
Anyways, this card is insane. This is actually one of the most crazy cards in the whole game. Its effect is uh, if you control a wing, a wind winged beast type monster, till the end of this turn, negate any monster effects your opponent activates. If you control a harpy monster, you can activate this card from the hand. And then if this card is destroyed and it's spell and trap zone, you get a search feather duster, but feather duster's banned, so you're never gonna activate that. But being able to impermanence literally every monster effect that activates on your opponent's side of the field, like not even on the field, it's graveyard hand, uh, deck, even like field it's crazy it's insane it's a full board impermanence so unless they have a trap negate or like a solemn judgment which is completely possible and also you can play triple solemn judgment right there uh instead of the sky battles but it's crazy uh this card's nuts it's it's insane but anyways that's it for some morgue uh, I think the birds are pretty cool. They're definitely a different kind of deck. A Another Tribute Summon deck that doesn't seem too broken, which is really nice that we get a Tribute Summon deck that isn't obscene. But I think the best part about some orgs and the fact that they're a Tribute deck isn't that they're not a bad Tribute deck. And I think that's probably like the best part about them is that they're not bad, but they're not fantastic either right now. I do think that they are a pretty decent deck. I mean, like like I said, uh, one of my buddies took it to competitive locals and he he won, like he, he took first. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Uh, let me know what you thought down in the comments below. Uh, if you wanna, like I said, if you wanna see the uh, the locals winning version of this deck, that uh, just comment it down below and I'll get that guy, that for you guys. Before I go, down in the description there is a link to our Patreon our Discord, and our Teespring, so if you feel like checking any of those out, all the links are in the description. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.